Welcome to TV20 News. We are Cleveland. I'm Leah Hasledge. A new monument was recently unveiled that will be honoring military families and those that lost their lives while serving our country. People filled the seats at the Lewis Stokes Cleveland VA Medical Center for the unveiling of a new memorial. The guests of honor at the ceremony and for whom the monument is dedicated are known as Gold Star Families. A Gold Star family member is any father, mother, brother, sister, son, daughter, or relative who has lost a loved one in the service of our nation. We are all here today because of you. Thank you for your sacrifice for our liberty and our freedom. And to the family members, thank you for all you have given our great nation. Cleveland Mayor Frank Jackson attended the dedication and offered his remarks. But to the Gold Star families, I want to uh, express to you that I always find these moments to be difficult because I know that no matter what I say or do is insufficient. So this monument is really something in, for me that allows an expression of what I really cannot say in words. It is in what is in our hearts as a community. So thank you very much. Robert Wilkie, who is Secretary of the United States Department of Veteran Affairs, reminded the Gold Star families of the role they must now play. And I can think of no better testament to the Gold Star families than to say your presence here, your presence across this great land, exists to remind your fellow citizens why they sleep soundly at night. We can never thank you enough. The man everyone came to see was Medal of Honor recipient Herschel Woody Williams, whose foundation helped make this monument possible. I continue to try to stress that these monuments, these memorials to the loved ones, is not about me at all. I'm just a cog in the wheel. I hope I can keep the wheel turning so that all over America people will come to the realization of the sacrifice that has kept us a free people. To fully understand what the monument means to Gold Star families, listen to what Mike Maduri, whose brother made the ultimate sacrifice for our nation as a Marine, had to say. It was an honor to be here and experience such a beautiful day, a beautiful ceremony, and to be a Gold Star family member. It's okay. <laughs> we appreciate his service, along with the rest of the other men and women who have served this country as well, and we support them every day. In Cuyahoga County, Soldiers and Sailors Monument was the site for the opening ceremony for Navy Week Cleveland 2018. There are times and places when we celebrate. Today we celebrate the beginning of Navy Week here in Cleveland. We honor and remember those who came before, and we honor and welcome today's Navy women and men who serve our interests here and abroad. Mayor Frank Jackson attended the ceremony, offering his own remarks, and later presented a proclamation to Navy Vice Admiral and keynote speaker, C. Forrest Faison. You know, I want to uh, welcome the Admiral uh, back to Cleveland and welcome the Navy to Cleveland and really thank the Navy for choosing Cleveland to be the 11th out of the 14th events you'll be holding this year uh, uh, throughout the country. Uh, this event will entail a week of events that I'm pretty sure someone would describe to you that will have the Navy engaged at every level throughout our community. Vice Admiral Faison, who is also the 38th Surgeon General of the Navy, gave us a brief history of Navy Week. So we're a maritime nation. Uh, our, our peace, our stability, our economy depends on freedom of navigation and uh, security of the shipping lanes. But less than 1% of our nation has served in uniform. And so we find that there's an opportunity to go out and educate Americans about what, what their Navy's doing for them today. So Navy Weeks are all about going out to communities that don't have a strong or a large Navy presence and telling them about the things that their Navy's doing for them. It's not a coincidence Navy Week returned to Cleveland, says Faison, who grew up in Rocky River. I pushed hard to come back to Cleveland. 
Absolutely. So uh, uh, when I uh, when I first took over as the Surgeon General, I said, you know, we need to go to Cleveland for a Navy week. And uh, so I, absolutely, I've been pushing hard for this. Uh, but a lot of people were part of that decision because uh, Cleveland has got a strong linkage and heritage with the Navy. And uh, as I shared in, in the speech, um, we couldn't do our mission without the support of our communities. And Cleveland is a big part of that. After the ceremony, the Navy Ceremonial Guard drill team put on an impressive performance for the crowd. Cleveland police are adding a new crop of rookies to their ranks. Council Chambers of Cleveland City Hall was filled to capacity as the 140th Cleveland Police Academy class marched in to their graduation ceremony. Before swearing in the cadets, Mayor Frank Jackson offered them a reminder of what it means to work in public service. Public service is an honorable profession, but it's not made for everyone. Yeah, but those who do it and do it well have the opportunity to impact the lives of individuals, families, and communities. And now you have that opportunity. Council President Kevin Kelly attended the ceremony and was one of the first to congratulate the new officers. You've answered the call to service. You've answered the call to serve people, and you've entered a position of esteem. You are now a police officer. You are now in a position of esteem within the community, and you need to respect that, that title that you have, the office that you now have, the authority that you now have. And uh, it's, really, it's, it's really important. It's a great part of being part of the Cleveland family and serving the public. Ward 15 Councilman and Public Safety Chair Matt Zone expressed how proud he was to the class for making it to graduation. Each and every day, you will have the ability to impact and change somebody's life by the work that you do. And sometimes it's not a very glorified job. It's going to be very difficult. But I will tell you, you will make that difference in how you approach your job. Before handing out their certificates, Police Chief Calvin Williams commended the officers on their new role and thanked their families for the support. I want you to make sure that you keep standing on the right side because this is a challenging career, but if done correctly, your family, your friends, your community will be extremely proud of you for the next 10, 15, 25, 35, 45 years. The city of Cleveland has a rich history and we want to test your knowledge. Our trivia question for this week, what Cleveland landmark was dedicated in 1894? Is it A, Terminal Tower, B, the Fountain of Eternal Life, or C, Soldiers and Sailors Monument? We'll have the answer when we return. Your girls have been with you through every moment of your life. They were with you when you felt unbreakable and with you when you had your heart broken. They were with you when you shared your love with the world and with you when she became your world. They're still with you right now. But how well do you know them? Be sure to tune in to Hora Hotel right here on TV20. Welcome back to TV20 News. We are Cleveland. I'm Leah Hasledge. Our trivia question for this week. What Cleveland landmark was dedicated in 1894? 
Is it A, Terminal Tower, B, the Fountain of Eternal Life, or C, the Soldiers and Sailors Monument? The answer is C. The Soldiers and Sailors Monument opened on July 4, 1894 and honors Civil War soldiers and sailors from Cuyahoga County. If you recently found yourself an empty nester because the kids went off to college or you're just looking for a little companionship, look no further than City Dogs Cleveland. TV20 reporter Dan Monroe has more. Leah, I'm at Cleveland's Animal Care and Control Center, also known as City Dogs. They say they have a lot of dogs in need of adoption. Yeah, we are completely full again. It's a busy, busy time of the year. Um, and you know, we never, we can never say no to any stray dog. Uh, shelter operations manager Michelle Harvanic and her friend Mimi says the city dog shelter is full of lovable pooches looking for their forever home. She also says that adopting a cuddly pet is easier than you think. You can just walk on in, walk through the kennel, see if there's any dog that catches your eye. Um, and then you'll stop and talk with us. We'll ask you a couple of questions about your home life and what you're looking for and what your family's like. Um, and then we can bring that dog out and introduce them to you. Um, the other way is you can look online. We have all of our adoptable dogs listed online. Um, sometimes that can be a little bit more helpful because you can kind of take your time looking at them and you're not overwhelmed because the kennel here is pretty overwhelming. To find your perfect pup, visit patangle.com forward slash C-A-C-C. Also, the price to adopt the dog won't break your bank either. The adoption fee is, uh, the regular adoption fee is $61, and that includes a microchip like we were talking about how important those are. Um, the current county license, um, vac full set of vaccines, including the rabies vaccine, um, and then all the dogs are spayed and neutered before they go home as well. Here at City Dogs, they're looking for people with a lot of love in their hearts to take in one of these stray dogs. Make your home a forever home for one of these beautiful pups. Give City Dogs a call today, or even check out on the website at PetTango.com. At City Dogs Cleveland for TV20, I'm Dan Monroe. Thanks, Dan. The team at City Dogs wants you to know that they'll be opening their brand new facility in December. Well, City of Cleveland employees had a chance to relax with lunch and learn a new art. The City of Cleveland offered a one-hour painting class for employees to take while they ate. Kelly Smith, coordinator of the City's Wellness Works program, says painting has many benefits. We brought in instructors from Condale Art and they are teaching our um, employees how to paint. What are the benefits of just painting? Well, it's relaxing. Um, it's part of our wellness program and we're trying to have different types of activities and programs for the employees. We don't want to just do um, regular exercise programs, so we're trying to think out the box and come up with different um, activities for them. First they created outlines and shapes and then added in the color. Then they focused on details. The end result was a beach scene complete with sand dunes and sandals. Smith says events like this are a good way to break up an employee's day and relieve some stress. That was the goal, was to make sure to make it a little bit different. We even changed our lunch. Usually we have a really healthy lunch, but we thought this would be a different type of activity. So maybe do fried chicken or you know something else for them so they can actually feel like that they're at another place, not at work. The first Inkaya Music Festival was hosted in downtown Cleveland. TV20 reporter Alex Picturna has more on the story. We're here at Mall B and C, where music enthusiasts came by the thousands to enjoy a weekend of live performances. I am so elated to be here and support this. I think it's going to be a really great push off for Cleveland to have this music event here. This is a beautiful facility. Come on, this is like this should be used for this. We had a chance to speak with Joe Litbeg, executive producer of this year's Inkaya Fest. It's a, a music and cultural event for the city of Cleveland. I mean, that's really what, what we set out to do, was create something that really showcased the city of Cleveland, uh, and, and it's been the variety of, of genres of music that the people here love, and, uh, you know, highlight some of the local food and drink um, for Cleveland, and, and just kind of give people an opportunity to come down by the lake, beautiful weekend, hang out, relax, listen to great music. Besides being set right in the heart of Cleveland, highlights of the Ankaya Music Festival included over 20 live performances, two stages, and food trucks galore. 
we caught up with a few attendees of Inkaya Fest to see how they were enjoying the show. This is Cleveland. It's my town. I support it. When they want to bring a rock and roll fest annually, I'm there, baby. Because I love music and I love Cleveland and the two together. It's a magic made in heaven. It's wonderful. To learn more about this year's Inkaya Fest, you can visit their website, inkaya.com. At the Inkaya Music Festival in downtown Cleveland for TV20, I'm Alex Picturna. The 47th annual Labor Day Parade and Festival took place at Martin Luther King Jr. Drive down to Luke Easter Park, where attendees had a chance to meet political candidates and register to vote. You can catch the Labor Day Parade in its entirety on our TV20 YouTube channel. That's all for your TV20 News. We are Cleveland. I'm Leah Haslidge. Up next, we'll have Christian Patterson with the Inside Sports Report.